Richard, you have a fantastic facility here at GW Martin. Now, we want to review your latest investment, the Star SR38 Type B. Now, what were your considerations when purchasing this machine? Well, it's, it's part really of a strategic business plan we've got for the company. We're looking at um, growing the business, trying to make the business more profitable. We're up against a number of uh, issues around the engineering sector in general. One is the lack of skilled labour. Uh, and the other is just getting more competitive, being more competitive. We're always being challenged by outside influences for, on price. So we've got to make sure we're competitive. So we, we've got a, a few strategic problems that we've got to face up to. And based on that, we've started to look at what investments we need to make to, man to manage those issues and overcome them and ultimately make the business profitable. So from a strategic perspective, how has this benefited your business? And you know, what, how did you used to make the parts um, before you purchased this machine? Well, we, we replaced the, this machine replaced a multi-spindle machine. Uh, we had a multi-spindle machine here that was operating for about a third of the year on certain components. And we couldn't really see a way of generating enough business going forward for it. And also the business we would generate, we could generate, wasn't uh, for us profitable enough. So we looked at replacing it with a more flexible machine. A machine that gave us, uh, but, but even though it's more flexible, it still had a very, very fast cycle time for the components. And so it gave us that increase in productivity that we were looking for. So with the multi-spindle, you know, you've done high volume work on the multi-spindle, I'm guessing. So are you still doing the high volume work on, on, on the star? We are. I mean, the, 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 the multi we, we had before was, was quite limited in what it could do on the back end of components. So although we were producing most of the component very quickly, uh, the sophistication of components started to get more and more obvious. So we just couldn't manage the component, complete the component in one hit. Um, so we had to do second operations. This machine does the whole thing in one go, no second operations. And of course, the more, the more times you pick a part up and make something, do something to it, the more money it costs you. So this, this machine makes it all in one go, and it's very, very fast. So the efficiency gains have come through reducing operations, but also the flexibility of the product. Now, it's an SR38 with up to 42 mil maximum capacity without the guide push. Can you explain to the viewers, you know, how are you using this additional capacity and, and capability? Well, we, when we went to Star, we, we had three parts in mind. We knew what cycle times we, ha we were making them in. And uh, they came, we asked them to give us some cycle times for these parts, and they were much better than what we were doing. So we, we were a bit skeptical at first, but in fairness, they came, this machine's come in. It's actually exceeded our expectations on cycle time. So we're now producing parts quicker, much quicker. Um, and, we, and we have flexibility, as you said, it goes up to 42 mil. So from zero to 42 mil, this is a very, very quick machine. So are you, all, are you also using this machine as a fixed head machine in, in a way? We're, we're using it as a fixed head machine, 100%. Uh, there's been a shift change in, in thinking. This has come again about because of people's requirements to get much more productive, much more efficient. Uh, you can buy a fixed head machine uh, that will go up to 42 mil, but it will not be as quick as this machine. So it, it, the, the, the market has changed slightly. I know Star, for instance, are taking advantage of it, but it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a perfect example of how you can adapt what I would call some automation, but making it very flexible. So when you say flexible automation, you're doing your high volume work on here, but you're also automating your medium volume work now, and that enables you to be able to rem run the machine constantly. Exactly. I mean, the idea is to run it 24 hours a day. So we're doing that right now. Uh, we're, we're, we've got components lined up to come in behind it. I think this machine, we're just looking right now at this machine's capacity going out for the rest of this year. And we're going to struggle, to be honest with you, to put anything else on it right now. <laughs> it's that full. So, so clearly, we've made the right move here because now we've got a very fast, very flexible machine working 24 hours a day that's replaced the machine that was working a third of the year. Now, in regards to some of the technical features of the machine, I see that you've got the machine with HFT, but I did notice some stringy swore. Yeah. So can you explain the reason behind that, please, and if you are using HFT at all? We do. We use HFT when we need it and when it's, uh, when it's applicable. Uh, HFT will slow down the cycle time very slightly. And so if we don't need it, we won't use it because obviously we want to maximise the cycle time. In this particular component, for instance, 
the, the stringy swarf isn't getting in the way. It's not clogging up anything. We can still run it 24 hours a day unmanned with the stringy swarf. So it, and it's quicker. So we make the choice between running long term, running 24 hours a day and cycle time. And so if we can get away with it, we will. But if we need it, we use it. Now with the rigidity of this machine, it's a, it's a large machine and you're doing obviously turning operations, but you're also doing milling operations too, yep. which potentially you couldn't do before nope. with your B-axis it's servicing both spindles. Yep. Can you enlighten us to how that has kind of changed the, the methods of producing some of the components that you are? Well, I mean, up to now we haven't had a B-axis. So, so to get angled holes, angled drilled and tapped holes and milled surfaces with an angle on, we've had to use an angled head, a special, a special holder, which are very expensive and again slows down the cycle time. This machine's got a programmable B-axis, so we can drill, tap, milled angled faces automatically without any special holders, any special tools, all in cycle, and it's a much quicker cycle time. So would it be safe to say that this machine has increased your profitability overall and made you more competitive? Without question, no doubt about it. That's exactly what we try to do on every investment we make now going forward. And this machine has done exactly that.